New update ledger options are available in the latest version of Sage 50 accounts and these provide you with a greater choice as to what information is recorded against your transactions. The new options are in settings and then invoice and order defaults. In previous versions of the software the update ledgers area was included in the general tab. However in the new version we've added a new update ledgers option and this includes the new and improved options. The new tab includes two sections, one for customers and one for suppliers. The suppliers option is used by the purchase orders option, so you'll only have this if you're using Sage 50 Counts Professional. The two sections both contain two new drop down lists, and you can now choose what information updates to the reference and the extra reference fields when you update to the ledgers. We'll concentrate on customers area as this applies to all levels of Sage 50 accounts. When you update a sales invoice to the ledgers, by default the invoice number is used as the transaction reference. However, as you'll see on the drop down, you can now choose from invoice reference, your order number or the customer order number. In previous versions of the software, no information is recorded in the extra reference field against the transaction. But similar to the reference field, you now have a choice and you can choose from invoice number, your order number which is set as the default, the customer order number or nothing. So you could just leave the field blank if you prefer. I'll quickly open an invoice just to explain where the fields are. So if we open invoice 85 and we'll just look at the, the various options that you had available from that drop down list. So the first option was the invoice number which is pretty obvious, it's this invoice number in the top right corner. Your order number option refers to the order number field just beneath the invoice number. Now if this invoice has been generated by dispatching a sales order then the relevant sales order number will appear here. The final option, the customer order number, is found on the order tab. It's the first box located within the customer order details area and it's something that's entered manually when you generate the invoice or the sales order. I'll quickly update the invoice to the ledger and then open the customs activity just so you can see where the information appears. So we'll just update this one that we've just looked at. Click update ledgers, we'll just preview the report. We'll then close out of it pop into customers, it's this customer here, let's have a look at the activity and that very last transaction 1247 you can see in the reference we've got the invoice number and in the lower box which shows you the breakdown of information on that invoice or on invoice 85 we've now got the breakdown of the two items and in there in the X reference we've now got uh, number 36 which was our our order number. With the addition of the new settings it's just a case of choosing what information you want to see. You can change the settings at any time however this won't retrospectively amend the reference and extra reference for each transaction. As we mentioned earlier there are similar options available for suppliers so if we just quickly pop into a purchase order let's just pick on that one We've got our order number, the reference, which is our reference, and if we click onto the order tab, you've got the supplier order number. So again, when you update ledgers via the purchase order screen, it's just a case of choosing what information you want to update to the reference and the extra reference fields.